Thank you for joining us on this ooh, sixth, seventh um, of the Future Funding webinars. Um, we've got a slightly different approach today because um, what we want to do is, is share some live work that's going on as well um, and talk about something that has literally just gone in last week um, and also kind of start to respond to some of the, um, the questions that people have had about how to put bids together for community renewal fund, leveling up fund, things like that. So try to share some of the learning that we've just recently experienced sort of over that as well. Um, so we've got, uh, we've just got a few people here today. We've got 26 people, which is brilliant. We should have quite a nice um, discussion in that case. Um, and we've got Catherine Harrison from Wakefield, who's going to be able to talk about the, the work that we've done, or that, um, she's been doing as well, in West Yorkshire, uh, putting together a bid around digital inclusion and then enabling wider um, activities based on that um, to the Community Renewal Fund um, as a, as a, a sub-regional approach, but with then potential for that acting as a pilot for regional, national, global opportunities. Um, so this session is being recorded as well, um, so we will be then putting this up on the base camp afterwards um, and yeah, if you've got any questions throughout, just um, either pop your name in the chat, um, pop the question in the chat or put a hand up and we can either answer straight away or we will have quite a lot of time for questions afterwards as well, so you can always save your questions to them as well. Um, if you do have a question in the chat, just put a Q colon first, and then that should, um, we'll be able to pick that up as it goes through as well. So without further ado, I'm going to kick off um, with a little bit of a discussion about um, developing collaborative bids. So what we're trying to do, I'm just trying to share my screen. Um, Brilliant. Can everyone see that? Yeah. So, so yeah, so what we're trying to do is I'm, I'm just going to go through sort of some kind of general sort of guiding principles around developing collaborative bids. And then Catherine's going to take us through the, the practical um, and, and real experience of what we just did over the last few weeks um, to get to the point of submission. We don't know if we're going to be successful on it yet, obviously, but we are hoping, expecting and praying that we will be. Um, so just to kick off, I suppose is that what, why do we want to partner? Why do we want to have collaborative bids? Why, why don't we just want to bid on our own? Um, and I suppose the, the first thing really is about reach. Um, so that's not necessarily. So in the case of um, that we'll be talking about later, part of that is about having reach across a wider geographical region. So working together, five library services um, to to reach that, that broader sub-region of West Yorkshire. But also it could be about reaching groups or communities that we don't have access to currently with the libraries as well. Um, so broadening our range and broadening the, um, the people that we are providing services to. And then in terms of offer, um, because what we, what we don't want to be doing or don't need to be doing as library services is providing every service that every one of our residents needs um, but what we can do is identify what our residents need, need, and then if there's priority needs or critical needs, then how do we partner with an agency who can support that um, to be able to deliver that to the people that we're working with as well? So it's that how do we broaden out the services that we provide to be able to link into the needs of our residents, but without, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> How do we broaden out the range of what we offer and the services we provide, but without us as libraries starting to deliver stuff that's completely off mission and completely out of the scope of what we would normally provide. And then capacity. How do we do, do we have the capacity within the organisation to deliver um, or could we partner to deliver at a different scale or in different areas um, or at a different speed as well? Could we 
could we have a service that we might be able to ramp up over the next two years to, to reach 10,000 people? Or could we partner with someone who could deliver that straight away who's already got access to that? Uh, and then capability as well. I mean, a lot of, as we start getting into really targeted service delivery and links to quite targeted funding opportunities, there's lots of capabilities and expertise and really specific subject matters that we don't necessarily have experience or expertise around as well. Um, so how can we partner to, so we can partner to bring in those, those things as well. And then alignment. When often I'm talking about alignments with partners, we're talking about how we align our values with them. But I think there's a big opportunity for us as library services to be able to use partners to align with the funding priorities and the strategic plans and those kind of wider strategic opportunities and strategic, um, well, it's essentially the kind of the local and regional uh, and national strategies. Um, that are enabling people to be able to to get funding as well so for example one of the one of the key things around um the community renewal fund in west yorkshire there was an element around housing and supporting homelessness so we partnered with big issue to to address that and to align with that to, to really meet that as well um and then looking at partners kind of thinking about what type of partners so there's kind of I suppose two stages, sort of the bidding partner and then the delivery partner. Um, we've ended up with the for the West Yorkshire bids, where where are bidding libraries connected and um, the West Yorkshire each of the West Yorkshire libraries are bidding partners. Um, and we then had that discussion about who leads, and we kind of needed to consider who had the resources in place, um, who had the time to do it. Were there any time constraints? Did we have a nice relaxed three months to be able to develop and write up the bid or did we have a three week period to be able to put it together what previous experience can any bidding partner bring to it and um, that would then feed into the um the kind of the supporting information around the bid and also what strategic positioning would would it enable as well do we is there a benefit to having an external partner write the bid um, it, as it was in this case, because for a, a regional approach, we were really keen for it not to be owned by one of the individual library authorities. It wanted to be a collaborative one. And then having an external um, lead partner come in to support that felt like it kind of put all of the individual library services on the same level as providing that kind of driving that, that service together, essentially. And then in terms of the delivery partner, so once you've actually got the bid, how are you going to deliver it? Um, and I think there's kind of two ways we can do that. One sort of formal, where you've got a formal delivery partner and you've got a formal arrangement and agreement to be able to deliver a service explicitly through that other organisation. And then informal partners, where you're at that stage of exploring how you might work together, or it might be a, a joint promotion, or you're working through those channels, but you're not actually formally involved in them as well. So we'll maybe talk about that in a little bit as well. And then kind of felt it would it would be useful just to have a, a bit of a think about who we should be partnering with. And the key thing for me here was about thinking long term. So how how does the long term partnership work? Um, and do you want to be partnered with them for the long term? I mean, it might be. Uh, there might be some expedient partnerships that you could make that would get you over a quick hurdle and get some funding in but actually do you want to be working with the long term and do they fit with does their um long-term strategy and long-term goals fit with what you're wanting to do as well and that's part of that kind of thinking about funding so one of the examples here was uh, within the west yorkshire bid is around we partnered with um, to provide an element of children support to children and families as well. We partnered with um, One Adoption West Yorkshire, and our thinking there was that this grant, this grant is for six months, so it doesn't really get us very far. It takes us to the end of the financial year, but if we start linking in with and partnering with organisations who could benefit and could essentially benefit and look at commissioning that service, then it starts to line up that kind of long-term funding base as well. So what we we're trying to do there was 
and with some of the other partners was trying to get something that got on the table and got a, a service starting to be delivered quite quickly and, and be developed quite quickly but then something that we could hook into possibilities for, for long-term commissions and um, obviously are the values do the values align with yours um is their focus the same as well um are are they seeking to address the same issues that you are as well um and will will the aspect of their work that you're partnering with remain their focus as well or is it going to be something that you're working with but it becomes less and less of a priority according to their their strategy as well so can you keep within their sort of their core strategic priorities rather than just being a, an offshoot as well and then critically how does it align with the funder strategies what what benefit to the bid will you gain by having them as a partner um and so again some of the examples that we had with um the west yorkshire bid was we looked explicitly at trying to find partners who worked across that west yorkshire combined authority region because we knew that the first the first kind of gatekeepers of those bids would be the west west yorkshire combined authority so we wanted something that aligned with their strategies and their priorities around having um a regional approach um a, a west yorkshire approach and so we tried to find um partners who would who would naturally line up with that and then kind of just explored how how we'd ex engage partners so the first thing obviously is just think who who do you know already who are you already working with and who are you already even tangentially involved in and this could be people that you know personally who are linked into other organizations or it could be organizations that the library is working with or organizations that you we, you've worked with previously the where we've got a funding bid that has a very short turnaround if you've already got a relationship whether personal professional or um some kind of delivery relationship with them then it speeds up that process um because you, you don't really have in a two or three week turnaround the time to start to engage and explore partnerships but then also who do you want to know who do you want to so thinking about future funding rounds we need to be thinking about now thinking about what kind of services would you like to deliver and how who would you partner with to deliver those so if you're thinking about next year possibly doing something around um targeted around sport housing or targeted around um broadening out your support to people um who are seeking to reskill um who do you need to know now or who do you need to start to know now um to be able to be in a position to then have a ready-made partnership for when funding comes out around that um, so part of that's also about horizon scanning. So, for example, in the Queen's speech, we had the lifelong education um, bill announced, and so there will be opportunities for funding at some point over the next year or so for those kind of services. So start thinking in that way, where if we can identify the potential, um, then start to think about what partners you might want to start making contact with now to start to think about how those services could could form um collaboratively i suppose and then also who can connect you i mean the there's often people in local authority areas or organizations who are kind of like these sort of super connectors where they've basically just got all of these networks and all of these connections and they might be a useful way to go through um to reach some of those uh the, the people you actually want to talk to as well um so start thinking that way but also look at your regional networks and national networks because there might be uh, people within there and there might be people within your regional libraries connected networks as well who've got contacts into other arms of organizations you want to talk to um and then i think the next three things are really about when you're talking to them showcasing the value of the library services so there is some information around we've got quite a lot of information around um advocacy and this partly is an advocacy thing but there might also be some ways to really physically showcase that as well so perhaps put on joint events and activities with organizations that you want to partner with as a kind of a sort of like a bit of a tester or a taster for them so they can kind of see the benefit of the library and the value that they can bring think about what's comfortable as well you might want to start small to so not think about 
right, let's get them together and we'll go for this levelling up fund bid of £12 million, but actually think, right, we, we want to develop a relationship, so should we start off writing a letter to a local trust to get £5,000 to deliver an activity in this area, which then starts to explore and see how we're starting to work together as well. And then what's the time frame as well? So the the time frame of the bidding time frame is is the thing that will end up guiding this. If you've got a long time to work up to it, you might want to start putting together a direct proposition where you're looking at an active sort of joint delivery mechanism where you're looking you're providing the service together in a formalized way. Or as we've done with the West Yorkshire bid, build in kind of exploration. Um, so for example, with the One Adoption Yorkshire partnership within the bid, all we've built in there is the a, a commitment to explore how increased digital inclusion can support the development of children and family services. Um, so it's we haven't committed to anything in that sense. Uh, we've committed to working with them, but we haven't committed to anything specific because we haven't had the time to build that thing up. And so that then comes uh, sort of brings us on to kind of how we formalize those arrangements. So what I've kind of broken it down into is three sections. One sort of about those exploratory or partnership discussions, um, the actual development of a service for proposal, and then the delivery of a proposal as well. So when you're exploring that, having those discussions, it doesn't really take, it doesn't take your organization's resources, but it will be taking your resources. Um, so you're investing essentially just your time in that. And at that point, there's no formal arrangements that would be needed. This is not legal advice, by the way. This is just kind of how I would approach it. When you actually come to developing a service or a proposal, then it's not just your time, it's your organization's time. And that at that point, you need a memorandum of understanding. So an MOU is not a binding document at all. It's basically just a a signed shared commitment that you'll work together to achieve some outcomes with a, an understanding that you would then proceed to a formal contract later. Um, but it's something that can't wouldn't necessarily stand up in court of law, but is is a formal commitment, maybe. And then once you get onto delivery, then that's where you need a contract or a partnership agreement or something formalized. And just to kind of clarify how we've why I've thought of that really is sort of just changing it. So um, at that first point, you've got no commitments at all. So you, there's no arrangements needed. Once you're starting to develop a service, you're committing organizational resources to it. And so you need the MOU. But then once you're being held externally accountable for what you're doing, then at that point, you need to have a contract or partnership agreement in place. So the position we are with the partners that we've gone into the West Yorkshire bid are, um essentially that we have no formal arrangements but we've got an, an agreement in writing that we that they will go into the bid for this specific specific reason which is about developing and exploring a way to put a service together what if we're successful in getting the bid at that point we'll be committing organizational resources on both part both sides so we'll have a memorandum of understanding and then if we get to the point of delivering things through those partnerships we then get the contract and the partnership agreement in place. So that's kind of a quick whiz through of, of the kind of things I'd be approaching um, if we're looking at a collaborative bid. So starting off thinking about what, what the benefits are. So increased reach, different offer, um, bringing in additional capacity or additional capabilities and skills, and then make sure that we align, using it to align with local strategies. Um, then going through to kind of how we do that, how we start to engage um, partners and really using networks we have already or preemptively starting to develop networks as much as we can. And then finally kind of formalizing it. So looking at making sure the more accountability and the more commitment of resources that goes into it, the stronger the, the contractual relationship between you two. So I'm going to hand across now um, to Catherine Harrison uh, from Wakefield, who's going to be talking about the, the specifics of the actual, um, no, the reality, the practical reality of putting together the bid for uh, the West Yorkshire Community Renewal Fund. 
Thanks, Ian. Can I just check? Are we doing a me saying next slide thing? Yes, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so, next slide. So, oh, um, first of all, the West Yorkshire libraries are the five libraries of uh, Leeds, Kirklees, Calderdale, Bradford, and Wakefield. And we are part of the regional Yorkshire and Humber 15 authorities, but that is our sub region of West Yorkshire. I've recently been working together on the um, Business Intellectual Property Centre's rollout. So we had got some initial um, working together on that. And going back um, to the 80s and 90s, we used to have training teams and other things that, that we had worked on together. So we are used to working together. And we do um, respect and trust each other as well. So that relationship is already, are already um, established. So back in February, um, the head of service at Bradford received some information internally about a possible digital program that was going to look at addressing the, the levels of digital exclusion. None of the rest of us have heard of it. We hadn't been shared that information. We started doing a bit of, of digging, thinking, um, sort of in a, a library's first way. Well, if somebody's going to be looking at digital exclusion, surely libraries need to be involved and, and surely we want to be at that party. Um, so we were quite fortunate that Andrea Ellison from Leeds is the current chair of, of Yorkshire and Humber Libraries and we decided that she would actually email the West Yorkshire Digital Partnership where this programme seemed to be coming from um, to outline the people's network, our best experience with our local communities, um, the work we do digitally supporting those communities and to have an informal conversation. That then led to Andrea getting invited to an official West Yorkshire Partnership meeting where she was really able to sell our service. Um, in preparation for that, we had a bit of a, a panic about um, what she was going to say, how we were going to sell ourselves. So in a minute, I'll show you the, the next slide, which has got um, an infographic that we decided to pull together of the big figures. And I think one of the things that libraries can show is that not just... Um, but working sub-regionally but working regionally and nationally actually we've got some huge huge figures that we can demonstrate our our reach to, to other partners um, and in the course of the meeting that she attended there was discussion about using best practice from things like 100% digital leads and also Salford um, Salford work um, where West Yorkshire Digital Partnership had actually appraised both of these schemes and looked at how they might want to um, use them or parts of them and their toolkits for that digital exclusion. So next slide please Ian. So these are the figures that, that we've pulled together for our West Yorkshire. We've got 119 libraries, we've got 600 full-time equivalent members of staff, a huge number of hours spent online, 675,000, 134 um, PCs, sorry 1,344 PCs, over five. 500,000 volunteer hours and open um, a combined 3,667 hours. And that was just some of the figures that, that we rounded up that we chose to take to that particular forum. Um, next slide, please. Because Leeds had already been working on the 100% the, um, the digital, they already had a toolkit, and I know that's already been shared in, in, other, in other forums by Libraries Connected. Leeds had already started working up their digital one-to-one -one service. So this is just a snapshot of their postcard, which has, has just gone live, um, where they're actually saying to the local public, you need help with your tablet, your smartphone, or your computer. You need, you need help to get technically savvy. Uh, next slide, please. And, and on that, they were telling people what actually they could help with. And we decided that these were all things that we could look at and rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and, and bearing in mind the timescales that, that Ian's outlined, that we could actually use some of the work that Leeds had already done, use our existing people's network to actually refresh that offer and promote it out there. Next slide, please. One of the really impactful things that we got from, from the Leeds work, and we all um, contributed our own impacts as well, which we've got sort of on the back burner to share as we go forward and using marketing and promotion, was Kurt's story. So Kurt was a homeless person that regularly used Leeds libraries. He was using it because he was trying to find a house, so he was using it to access the internet, um, or, um, accessing home information. 
but also he was using it for his universal credit and indeed for a bit of entertainment he liked listening to music he did have a phone but it wasn't a smartphone so without Leeds libraries as he says there it meant everything to him because there was no other outlet for free internet usage and he was trying to find a home he was trying to um, keep up with his universal credits and he wanted to be entertained next slide please. So we did have various meetings, obviously all virtual and the ideas that we had started sort of flowing. As I said, we, we were already part of the wider Yorkshire and Humber Libraries Connected where we're working on a, a shared LMS. We've done a procurement, we're now looking and you might have seen our advert um, at, at actually utilising that library management for our shared working and we're looking for a project manager help us develop that and within West Yorkshire we'd been um, leads had been rolling out the, the VIPC centre work um, and we'd also been talking to colleagues in in South and um, uh, North Yorkshire and East Yorkshire about how their schemes were going with that so when we were starting thinking about it there were all sorts of things that came to mind and some of the things that, that you know Ian's talked about if we have capacity to actually look at some funding for this how, what expertise did we all have? Um, and actually, and I can't remember who, came up with the idea of, it could have been Andrea, um, actually, could we go to Libraries Connected Ooh. and see if they could help us? Um, what, what, um, what could they bring to the party? So um, Andrea spoke to Isabel and Ian, and we sought permission to get Ian on our, our little working party. Um, obviously, the future funding work that Ian's been involved with, with different partners, was really helpful with that. His expertise as a commercial manager, together with our limited capacity, um, and the fact that actually we thought if we could come up with some kind of bid, then it would be an opportunity to, to actually then extend that both to the wider Yorkshire and Humber region, and actually to the whole of the North and the whole of Libraries Connected, some kind of national dissemination. Next slide, please, Ian. So we start to the bid to start taking shape, and during this time, um, Andrew was having conversations with with George Digital Partnership, and we found out that the program that they were originally looking to fund and extend to the, the whole of West Yorkshire, that funding wasn't available. So we started to say, should we look to Arts Council? Should we look to DCMS? Um, we've got this idea that we want to fund, but actually it didn't seem to be a funding body. But then suddenly. CRF funding um, came about. Andrew got invited to the briefing, the, the uh, PowerPoints were shared, we had more meetings, and we started to look at actually what, what the CRF funding um, enabled us to bid for, what our agenda was, what we could each bring to the table, and what was missing. And so, as, as, as um, Ian mentioned earlier, what extra partners we, we needed to bring on to develop those ideas. So from there, we really started getting going with, with developing that bid. And as I say, um, we started thinking about the different partners. So next slide. So we sort of came up with this digital ecosystem. What's actually happening out there already? Where can we um, pick ideas up from? Where can we partner? What toolkits are there already? So we're not actually reinventing the wheel. So we've got ourselves, West Yorkshire Libraries, with graphics shared. We've got the experience from 100% Digital Leads and those of you that have been involved with that will know that the, the, the staffing from that all came originally from Leeds Libraries and that and they're working with a, a whole corporate um, agenda for 100% Digital Leads. We've got various working relationships with the Good Things Foundation and the UK Online Centres. We've got our business and IP centres. Um, we made this connection that Andrea had got with the West Yorkshire Digital Skills Partnership and we found that Mark Temple, the, the chair there, was really pro-libraries, really understood what we were about and wanted to tap into um, the connectivity and the um, hardware, if you like, that we could actually bring to the party. And then, um, as I mentioned, we've got libraries connected on board and what that could bring, now to help us with the bid, but also to move things forward if we were successful and actually share it across, across the country. Um, and then we've looked at the gaps and the third sector organisations, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail as we go through. Next slide, please. So, most of this is things that you know about, but things that actually went into our, our bid. So 
digital access underpins all elements of people's ability to engage in society. And I just mentioned Kurt's story, but that's everybody, whether you're looking for a, a new bus pass or a blue badge, or, or you're looking to um, apply for a job, or you're looking to get on the housing, um, council housing system, universal credit benefits, all of that now you need to be digitally um, able. So you need the hardware and you need the skills. We felt that libraries were a recognised brand on, on the local high street. Um, we, we may have had cuts over the years, and I know there's lots of talk for a lot of people at the moment about COVID and the impacts of that, but we are still a very trusted and recognised brand. Everybody knows what a library is or what they think it is, and it's up to us to continue telling our story and making sure they realise how we've evolved over the last um, 20, 30 years. We are a free service that absolutely anybody can, can get involved with. You know, a lot of library services, you don't need ID, there are no fines. Anybody can walk through that door and get involved in, in that free service. And we are safe, welcome and accessible. Um, a neutral space, we're democratic. Anybody can walk in, nobody needs to know why you're walking in, what you're doing, and we're going to help you. And that's from our, our skills staff team. Um, you know, I've got digital skills, I've got, got inquiry skills, they've got people skills, every contact counts, they really want to help their community and be involved and help those individuals. And then the significant reach that we've actually got, and we've talked about the West Yorkshire reach, but across the country, these are the figures that, that we've got across the country in terms of numbers of libraries, number of visits. Um, We've really expanded our online offer thanks to COVID. That has pushed us along, but that has been a really good thing. And currently 60% of, of the population has got a current library card. And, you know, in the past we've talked about libraries having more um, visitors than football and uh, cinemas and other cultural uh, people put together. And I think the fact that 60% have got a current library card, I, I can't believe that anybody else could come anywhere, anywhere near to that. And another really um, uh, shocking figure, um, but good, good that they're utilising the library service is that actually 32, 33%, so a third of unemployed people have actually visited the library in the last 12 months. And that's come from the DCMS taking part survey. And I think in terms of talking to partners about different people that they need to support, um, that is a, is a really key statistic, and especially when we understand that unemployed people perhaps don't actually have the, the hardware, the smartphones that enable them to access um, digital sources. Next slide, please. So what was our bid going to be about? Well, it was going to be about the, the solution for digital support. Uh, we had a lot of talk about what the barriers were, I've mentioned the access to, to equipment, actually having the right equipment, having the right skills, and actually being motivated. And I think in the past we've all looked at motivations for digital work and actually um, thought about how we could get people to come into our, our libraries, what the motivations are to learn digital things. And we know that quite often that has been things like family have moved to Australia or America and they need to get in touch, they need to email, they need to share photographs and stories across the seas. It might be that they've been tracing family history. It might be that unfortunately they have been made redundant and they need to start applying for jobs and um, digital way is the only way. So we really wanted to tap into what people's motivations were. And we felt we could address this through the people's network, the public access computers that we've already got, the access to free Wi-Fi for those that did have equipment or smartphones and laptops. Um, and actually free support for getting online and, and their skills development. Next slide, please. So we came up with this, um, this inf inf that's not an infographic, is it? That's a visual tool, I will say. Um, and we were really, really pleased to have Ian on board. We were, we were quite excited at, um, that as we were talking in some of these meetings, Neil, uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm saying Neil, Ian, Ian typed away, um, Ian typed away and came up with these wonderful tables uh, that really sort of highlighted what we were trying to do. Um, and it, it was a good use of time and we were all able to, to contribute into that. So as you can see from that, we've broke, broken it down into three strands, the digital inclusion support, 
development of the digital services and the raising awareness of our digital offer, all of, of which are key. So Clyde Break is about the first part of contact. We are looking at not only how people can walk in out off the street, but um, how we can set up helplines, how we can get people ringing in to get um, digital help over the telephone for whatever digital equipment they've already got. We want to support and support signpost them further. So it's not just about what we can offer them, it's using our library skills to signpost them to other local organisations, to really make every contact count and move them um, to signpost anybody else that they need any help for with regard to any part of the life room. Leeds already had a, a tablet lending scheme and we felt that that was something that we wanted to extend across the region. Um, we felt that loaning tablets would actually help people learn those skills themselves, learn things in the library or online, but then actually have that time um, with their own friends and family to actually practice um, outside of any sessions that, that we were putting on. And we wanted to extend our online digital skills programme. So various of, of the authorities had different things, uh, some paid for some free resources, and we felt that we needed to build on some of those and actually move forward to, to make sure they were up to date, to make sure that they were really meeting the needs of what people wanted. And we also wanted to bring confidence and upskill our staff and our volunteers. Those of us that have been around longer than we care to remember will have done ECDL training and getting those digital qualifications. It is on most people's um, person specifications and job skills to have either a qualification in IT or um, quite a lot of experience. We wanted to make our staff and volunteers feel able to have those conversations, to encourage people to go online, to, to be able to convince them why it was good to be online and how it would, would help them. We were looking to go on to strand two, developing our digital services. This is where we started thinking about, about the partnership. Um, so we wanted to make our libraries health hubs. Um, we don't want to use the word hub on everything that we do, but we really felt that a lot of our staff were trained in things like every contact counts. Um, and we wanted to make sure that people could come into libraries and get access to health information. A lot of authorities had um, health trainers who were working in partnership already with different people in their authority. And we felt that that signposting information and skills um, would, would be a benefit to people. We knew we'd got a big homeless issue and I think the, the uh, case study that we've highlighted earlier with Kurt shows that and we all know that we have a lot of homeless people that in, in pre-COVID times actually come into our libraries. It, it's a nice warm space, you might be able to get a, a cheap cup of coffee, you might be able to get some free water, you can stay there all day, you can read the books, you can use the computers, nobody's going to hassle you. If you want to join into anything that's going on in the library while you're there, you can. And so for that end, um, and because of the support we know that the big issue um, give libraries and how they promote library services, we wanted to develop that partnership with them. We also know that children and families are a big part of um, the, use, the users already of library services. We'd already had some early work with one adoption where we'd looked at um, the West Yorkshire authorities actually supplying the books that adoptive parents need to enable them to go through that process but we also felt that the birth parents needed the part in all sorts of things and quite often it was those birth parents and those birth families that perhaps needed support the most and didn't have access to the digital resources and skills so that's another element that we're looking to explore with with um, one adoption i mentioned the fact that we're already rolling out the business and intellectual property center work um, through the extra funding that the british library have got all of West Yorkshire now are able to have a number of business databases and resources and now that we're opening um, back up our, our libraries more and more as we move towards step four of the roadmap we are keen to um, do a number of activities that support businesses and get that business community to, to recognise and realise actually what library services have got to offer and finally employment and all these things were part of the CRS bid, so we wanted to make sure we hit all of their, um, the, their priorities. 
and as we know libraries are a great place to um, help with your employment opportunities not only can you get a book or go online to enhance your skills and knowledge um, but you can apply for the job quite often we've got different partnerships with other employment agencies that will help you um, borrow a um, borrow a, a suit for the for the interview, help freshen up your interview skills, uh, help with the application form, help with your CV. So all of those things felt that they really fitted with our with our work. Um, and, and finally, um, we wanted to raise awareness of that digital offer. Um, one of my key phrases at the moment is sharp elbows. And, and when I come on to talk about, about the challenges, I, I really feel that um, sometimes we're invited to the party, sometimes people think libraries first, but we've still got a long way to go um, to get all partners to understand exactly what the values are of libraries and we really want to get, get some more publicity and promotion to, to bring that forward um, to make sure that everybody knows what we are and also the fact that you know we're all moving towards being more environmentally friendly, more sustainable. Um, and libraries, I think, are the first recycling green um, service that anybody ever had. You know, we do that. And the funding, as Ian mentioned, is for six months. Hopefully, if we get these things in place, we can, can then look to um, being more sustainable and continuing to deliver this beyond March 2022. We're already there. We've already got the buildings, the staff, the outreach to hopefully um, sustain, sustain if we're successful with the business. Next slide, please. So coming on to, to the benefits of, of the work we've, we've done so far then, as, as Neil said, the big, why am I calling you Neil? I, I don't know why I've got that in my head. As, as Ian said, um, the, the um, bid went in last week. Um, I think the collaboration really showed that we were really open and honest and sharing information from the word go. It would have been quite easy for Christine at Bradford just to have sat on that initial email, that initial information she got, but she reached out to us to see if we were aware of it and actually if there was anything we could do to work together. We had a strength of the existing partnership in West Yorkshire that I've already outlined that um, has gone back to the, you know, the early 80s and 90s, um, but recently has been strengthened with things like um, the the auction humble work that we've been doing, the business intellectual property work that, that we've just done. And all five authorities actually fed into the process and we all did what we could, when we could. So I'd got a member of staff that was really good at pulling infographics together really quickly. So Wakefield gathered together the, the statistics and, and did that infographic. Andrea was busy uh, working with West Yorkshire Digital Partnership and exploring, exploring those opportunities. David, Carol, Christine all attended the meetings, all fed into absolutely everything that we did and brought their partnerships that they'd already got with the different, uh, different other existing partners in the voluntary sector to the table and, and worked on that so that we could um, use that, utilising those existing contacts that um, we'd already got for this new, this new bid and this new partnership. And I have to say, although like probably a lot of you, I did find that the this time last year, the online, the Microsoft Teams, the Zoom, it was all a challenge. Uh, on a personal level, Wakefield Council are probably the most risk averse council going. We still don't have access to Zoom, so if I need a Zoom meeting, somebody else has to organise it. Um, we still don't have full access to Microsoft Teams. At least now, with both Microsoft Teams and Zoom, I can use my work laptop. I was using um, my iPad for many months. And I can now see a full screen view, but that has been hard. Um, but the benefits have really come to the fore recently and with things such as this collaboration. It's been so much easier to squeeze an hour's meeting in a couple of times a week because you're not having to travel. People can pop in and out to the meeting as, as they can because meetings are at short notice and meetings overlap. But we've all been able to pop in and out of most of the meetings um, to give our thoughts on where we're at. Um, the sharing of screens and that immediate work that I mentioned, Ian, pulling together, um, actually just typing stuff into the bid, actually pulling together um, graphics to, to make it look so much more um, approachable and being able to take on everybody's ideas while we're actually doing those meetings. Um, 
as I said, not everyone's always been able to attend, but the work's been driven forward by these quick, sharp meetings and emails telling people where we're at. And I'm sure you've all experienced that journey that certainly I've been on in terms of um, the scariness of, of online and, and the uh, Zoom, etc. where we are now, where we've really harnessed it and are using it for our own good. Um, next slide, please. So the challenges, as I say, I think the library's first ethos, which we're all, all really signed up to, and I know a lot of other partners are really signed up to, is still a bit patchy. If people have worked with you, really want you on board, they really value the library's reach, the library's collaboration, the fact that we, we get our hands dirty, we really get involved in, in doing whatever needs doing. We've got our venues that we can offer, we've got our staff, and we're always really flexible and willing to take part but I think we just need to keep pushing that um, and I think the fact that part of our strand is the publicity and promotion and really making people aware of us is really key to, to this bid. Um, Andrea was really fortunate that she did get an invite to the party and that really is key and I know when other people have spoken about things so I remember um, Michelle at Hull talking about when they were the city of culture it's about getting an invite to that that table and because Andrea at Leeds was able to get an invite to the West Yorkshire Digital Party um, that has really helped us so initially she had a, an informal meeting with the chair then she managed to get to a meeting and now she's actually got an agenda item so some of the slides that I've shown you today will be part of an agenda item and hopefully from there um, Andrea will have full seat at that partnership which she'll then be able to cascade to, to the rest of us so that invite is key to finding out what is happening uh, you really need your sharp elbows you really need to email people get, get to, to these meetings and make people listen and understand what you've got to offer the time frame and the pace of this bid has been hectic so this week i've been working on three bids and i know a lot of you will be in the same position I'm working on a big ace bid for a, a library's um, festival in October. I've been working on a, a happy, hungry, healthy holidays bid. That again, it has come from the council and, and, and this bid. And we're all in this situation. We've all got budgets, we've all got day jobs, we've all got operational matters. But I think we've been keen to try and work together to actually pull this bid together um, despite the time frame and the pace, which has been a huge challenge, but the collaboration has enabled us to, to get through it and to get that bid in last week. Um, the diaries, the capacity, all those things I've just mentioned that we're all doing have, have been a, a huge challenge. And um, by working together, we've been able to navigate those, those challenges. Um, and as I say, a continuing challenge, coming back to the first point, is marketing libraries, selling the services, making sure that, that potential partners um, know what you're about. Actually, you can address their agendas. You are interested in most people's agendas. Um, you'll all have seen the, the conversation going on at Basecamp at the moment. Are any of us in the same directorate? Are any of us got the same other partners in, in, in those directorate? I think, I think not. So we just need to keep shouting, keep making those internal partners keep reaching out to each other for the external partners and really selling that library's first brand that we're all signed up to. Next slide. So what are our next steps? Well, we're expecting the outcome of the bid at the end of July and we're expected to start delivering six months from September. So basically we've got a month to, to prepare and get running. Um, one of the things that we had to do in the bid, as in many bids, was, was put a whole risk log in. And none of you will be surprised to know that three of our main risks were the procurement process. So we talked about getting um, iPad tablets for loan, which may or may not be iPads, but tablets for loan. Um, my Wakefield procurement department is down to one person at the moment, and I can't tell you how many pages the spreadsheet goes to. I think they've all gone to Leeds, actually, so we're busy recruiting. But procurement is an issue, um, and colleagues across West Yorkshire all said it, it potentially was an issue for them and could take some weeks to, to procure um, tablets. Luckily, Leeds have got a framework which we may be able to jump onto, and we're currently investigating that. By partnering with Libraries Connected, it may be 
they can procure the tablets for us. Um, we do know that there are other um, challenges with that because they're not VAT registered, whereas with, with the library services procurement, we could get that benefit. So we're looking at that at the moment. Um, I don't know about your local authority IT department, but mine will want to do a full due diligence um, question and answer and don't know how many reports on loaning um, the, the, the tablets and actually looking at anything else that's online that needs to be signed up potentially to our network, even though the library's network is separate to the council network. And of course, it's about getting that work on their work programme, which again can be three months ahead. So we're all busy talking to our IT departments, making sure they're aware of the bid and making sure that we are putting any due diligence or any other, um, I'm going to say hurdles, any other things that we need to get through on their work programme. There's also risks around the recruitment process. So do we need a whole new um, job description? One of the things I failed to mention is that we are actually putting um, part of the bid is for people to actually run and manage the programme in each of the authorities to make sure that we've got people with capacity to train our people, to get them up to speed, to make them feel more confident. So we have got some posts in there um, to help deliver to help deliver this programme. And of course that means recruitment process, which means job descriptions and person specifications and evaluation processes and meetings if you're a local authority. Again, we're looking to work with Libraries Connected to actually start developing those things now. And it probably would be that um, if everything works out all right, that Libraries Connected would develop those job descriptions and actually the recruitment might be through them rather than through the lengthy council process. But all of this work is happening now so that if we get um, a yes at the end of July, we are already starting, um, cutting along to where we need to be because we know that recruitment takes time in itself. Are the right people out there to, to deliver this? Will they apply for a six months secondment? And of course we are looking at could it be a secondment from West Yorkshire? Could it be from Yorkshire and Humber? Could it be the M62 corridor? We are working nationally. Could it be anywhere in the country that can do things nationally for us? So that's something for you all to watch out for when we find out if we get the bid. And what if we don't get the bid? Well, if we don't get the bid, we're going to look at other funding streams because we really believe this is something that we as West Yorkshire and we as library services across, across the UK need to be looking at we do have those digital skills amongst our staff and volunteers. We do have the venues, we do have the equipment. And with a refresh, we really feel that we could really make a difference to um, those people that are digitally excluded. So I think that is questions, um, Ian, is it? Thank you. Yes, thank you. And um, thank you for that, Catherine. That was absolutely brilliant. I, I think what I just want to highlight as well, Actually, just from that last slide, I'll see if I can go back to it. Is it going to work? No, no. Um, but um, that last slide where essentially we've got, um, you you need to work with procurement, you need to work with the IT departments, things like that. Even if it was just a Wakefield bid and Wakefield was doing it on their own just for a service within Wakefield, it's still a collaborative bid. So whatever we're doing, it's a collaborative bid because we've got we we still need to work and collaborate with those internal partners, even if we're not collaborating with external partners as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. And does anyone have any questions um, for Catherine or for myself? We've also got Carol on the line, I think, as well, who was um, part of the, the partnership. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll. Um... I'll put my video on and my, there we go. <laughs> I'm here if anybody wants to ask anything. Or... No. Um... Stunned, stunned silence. As I say, I think a lot of it is probably things that you're already doing and already aware of. Um, I think it's just highlighting that we're all in it together and some of the challenges that 
And, and I think for me, it's the scale of it. So it's a bit bigger than we'd normally do, I think, because um, there's five of us. And, and I felt really supported actually through it because it's not something, it's, I'm not an expert in putting bids in. So it's been really useful to have Ian's support. Um, and I think just that collaboration has been the thing that really worked for me. And, and I'm one of the ones who could only dip in and out of the meetings. And um, I felt like I maybe wasn't doing as much as I could, but I don't think it mattered because we, we know each other and trust each other and know that, um, you know, we'll do uh, what we can when we can. Um, so that was really good. That was a really good thing about it. Yeah, I think what 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 I came away with was, was as well that, no matter how, and, and everyone did put loads of time in. Um, there was no one who just dipped in that for five minutes. Everyone put loads of time in. And it felt like it was a bid that we'd all developed as well. Um, and I think that's really important, especially with partnerships, because everyone needs to be bought into it as well, especially because it's going to be quite a tight time frame to deliver quite a big bit of work. Um, and I think the fact that everyone's been such an integral part of it feels like it. it's there's not there's, no one's going to have any surprises everyone knows what they're um the the bid for and it really feels like it's kind of a positive collaborative thing as well one question i had for carol and catherine i suppose um is is that thing about libraries first as well the libraries libraries being the first port of call for local authority procurement how how and uh, I think this might be a question that we've we've heard before as well. But how, what can we do? What can we do to push that? What can we do to to make sure that libraries are at the top of everyone's procurement or commissioning lists, and when they're starting to think about service delivery? Shall I go first, Carol, and then yeah, you can yeah, do. Uh, yeah. I think I think you're doing. I think you are doing everything you can. I just think it's continuing to do it. I think it's making use of every opportunity. Um, no matter where you are, whether you're talking to, whether you know it's in your personal life or your work life, whatever meeting you're at, um, just reminding people. Um, at the moment, I'm on um, a community hub meeting for Wakefield. So Wakefield um, put some money into our community hubs, which, and I'm sure again, lots of people will recognise this. So back in 2012, Wakefield closed half its libraries. And these community hubs, I'm on these um, monthly uh, conversations with about supporting communities who I guess where in all the places where we closed libraries um, and so these community hubs have had to develop and um, I'm on these meetings because it's about COVID it's about supporting people in the community and I've got a couple of libraries who are taking part where they are the only thing in that community hence me being at, at the meeting but I'm constantly having to remind those community partners that um, we've got the internet We've got PCs, we've got Wi-Fi. These things that they're, they're getting now from council funding, we've already got and we want to work with them. And we've got rooms and they can drop in and they can do X, Y and Z. And I know you're doing that with national partners. And I think it's about all of us doing that with any national partner, any regional partner. Um, I know we always talk about, you know, an advert in Coronation Street. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that would work or, or not. Um, but it is. It is that. It is that kind of thing, that promotion and that ongoing job. I think it's a an ongoing and almost never ending job. Do you want to add to that, Carol? Yeah, I just agree. I agree with everything you said, Catherine. I mean, um, you know, for those of us who've been around a long time, um, I, I'm seeing things now happen um, or suggestions being made. Um, for the second time so you know oh why don't we have a van that goes around with books and information well actually you just closed my mobile libraries about five years ago so it's that kind of thing but I think it's really important to build your networks I think you know inter internally in the council as well because I think internally in your own authority is quite often the hardest thing to do because you kind of sat there and, and you think you assume people know what you're doing and, and what you're about but then you know, you realise actually they don't and, and they haven't thought of you. And um, somebody once said to me that we mustn't be defensive. We must just keep saying, you know, I've heard you doing this great thing. Do you know that libraries do this and that? And um, not, well, why haven't you thought of those kind of thing? And, and even though we think it, but just that kind of what can we do that, that supports you? Um, and, I don't, and it is never ending, but I don't think we should be ashamed of that, really, because we evolve. 
I think, you know, libraries evolve um, to meet the needs of the community. And so we are always changing and we just have to keep reminding people of that and reminding people that we're there. But for me, um, you know, make sure you know you, who your elected members are, make sure you, you, you talk to them. That's been vital um, for me. Make sure that um, you, you have a um, somehow an approach to your strategic director or your, your chief exec. And I know that's dif difficult, depends how far you sit down um, you know the ladder and quite often there's quite a few people between you but I, I'm really brazen about these things and I sent things to the chief exec and say oh you may you may not have seen this and if she reads it she does she reads it and if she doesn't she doesn't but I keep on doing that regionally I think it's important to have that um, big cohesive voice I think we're, we're seeing that um, numbers matter you know so some of the things that Catherine's talked about how many libraries we've got so 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 you know your networks um, and and your your um, you know we're bigger in numbers out. It's all right me saying I've got twenty four libraries, but to actually say we've got and I've forgotten what it was a hundred plus, um, it makes a bigger impact. And then of course you know the things that Libraries Connected are doing, obviously, um, social media and just retweet things and keep on retweeting and follow people and they'll follow you back and that kind of thing. And just to add on um, Carol's point about your senior managers and your elected members, quite often you might have barriers to that um, because you might be supposed to go through your line manager or whoever. Um, I quite often just send things and then if I get told off, I just say sorry. And I'm sure a lot of people do that. It's just a mistake I make that, you know, I, I want my annual report to go to all the councillors. Um, and if, if somebody says to me, oh, I don't think that's appropriate, sometimes I just press the button anyway and they have to say sorry. Seek forgiveness, not permission. That's mine. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> We've been having some interesting discussions in the future funding workshops. Um, so this morning, all the discussions was about people not feeling, <clears throat> not feeling they've got the confidence to, to assert the fact that they should have a right to be around that table. Um, and I think what, what I kind of came away with this idea that actually it, it kind of, we, it doesn't matter whether we've got a right to be around that table, we've got a desperate need to be around that table and we need to center our confidence in that need rather than whatever right we feel we should have. And so if we need to be around the table or sending stuff to the chief exec or telling our strategic directors what what impact the library's made then we just need to do it um and that that needs to be where our confidence to do that comes from because if we don't we're kind of a bit stuffed and i think as carol said and i think it was neil at, at manchester that i first heard saying don't use the library's word first use what what you can do for somebody's agenda and what impact you can help them make and i, I think that is the key to um when you are trying to get at somebody's Able, say oh I've heard you're doing this um, you know you need any support because this is what what we can offer you without actually saying as Carol said being defensive and saying well did you know libraries do that it's it's about playing to their agenda and and telling them what you can do for them and then hopefully later on they'll be able to do something for you but the first thing is what you can do for them yes absolutely does anyone have any other questions um, if not it might be worth us freeing up some of your afternoon. No, oh, well, thank you for joining. Um, and we have another one in two weeks time. Um, I will get something out early next week, just about the, um, the focus of it. Um, do send in any requests or recommendations or suggestions. If, you, if there's any burning issues you'd like us to cover, um, we're looking at um, the upcoming ones. We've got um, grant and trust fundraising. So we've, we've got a, um, a grant making trust manager who's going to be joining us for a future one as well to talk about the kind of things that they're looking at in, in fundraising bids. But we've also got others on cost modeling and things like that. So let us know what would be, what, well, what would you benefit for, uh, from? Um, and we'll be able to kind of tailor future ones around that as well. So, Thank you for joining and we'll see you again in a fortnight. And yeah, we'll let you know as soon as we find out about the uh, community renewal fund bid. <laughs>